There are very important developments on the front line, on the sixth day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russian army captured some important strategic regions while trying to advance in occupied Ukraine. The North Atlantic Alliance is taking new military steps after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Ukrainian intelligence unit has issued an important announcement regarding Belarus, which has lined up 300 tanks on the Ukrainian border. The Ukrainian army achieved great success in the south of the country. There is a claim about Russia's 810th Independent Marine Brigade that will anger Putin. A Russian lawmaker in Moscow opposed the invasion of Ukraine, not caring that Putin would get angry. A Pentagon official in the USA shared important information about the Russian occupation troops in Ukraine. Kherson governor gave information about the regions captured by the Russian army, which started to enter the city. It was announced that the troops of the United States and the North Atlantic Alliance in Europe will begin an unprecedented mission against the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We will examine the details of this mission, which will make Russia nervous after reporting the important developments on the front line in Ukraine. Russian troops have seized the river port and railway station in Kherson, Mayor of Kherson Igor Kolihav said. According to CNN, Russian military vehicles entered Kherson after heavy shelling and appear to have taken the southern city. This southern city of Ukraine, attacked by Russian troops advancing from the Crimea, is strategically very important. The Russian army's continued attempt to capture the city despite heavy casualties highlights Putin's eagerness to cut off Ukraine's connection to the Black Sea. The Ukrainian army announced that it destroyed a large Russian military convoy in Kherson with an airstrike with armed drones. Russian special forces were also sent to the city of Kharkiv in the east of the country. Russian paratroopers landed in Kharkiv and attacked one of the city's military medical centers, UNIAN news agency reports. Ukrainian forces are repelling the attack. Russian troops continue to attack the city of Sumy, located in the northwest of Kharkiv. The city of Trostyanes in Sumy Oblast, was occupied by Russian forces, journalists report. Three columns of Russian troops entered the city on March 1, demolishing the gate to the Round Court, a historical landmark, and destroying an art gallery. The Ukrainian Air Force continues to inflict heavy blows on the Russian army, as Russia still cannot achieve air superiority. Ukraine's Air Force, along with units of the Army and Territorial Defense, destroyed a large Russian military convoy near the city of Bashtanka in Ukraine's southern Mykolaiv region. Military bloggers reported that the convoy contained up to 800 vehicles. There are allegations that there are soldiers in the Russian army who oppose the occupation of Ukraine. Russian troops in Crimea refuse to take part in Ukraine invasion. The Center for Defense Strategies, citing their sources in the Marine personnel in Crimea, says members of Russia's 810th Detached Marine Brigade are in a demoralized state. This type of disintegration in the Russian army may cause Putin to become more authoritarian. Citing an unnamed senior official at the Pentagon, Ukraineform reported that about 80% of the troops Russia has amassed along Ukraine's borders have crossed into Ukraine since the invasion began on Thursday. Earlier, a senior U.S. Department of Defense official told reporters during a briefing that morale has dropped in some Russian troops. The official said acts of vandalism likely included piercing vehicle gas tanks so that soldiers could avoid going into battle. The Russian army continued its missile and air attacks on Ukrainian cities today. It is alleged that the Russian army used high-impact munitions, including thermobaric missiles, in today's bombardments. In addition, the Ukrainian media reports that Russia used the 222 cubic meters strategic bomber in the February 28 bombardment of Kharkiv. It is reported that this aircraft, which can also carry nuclear missiles, fired 16 missiles targeting civilian settlements as if it were in an exercise. The NATO alliance is deploying its rapid response force for the first time ever to bolster its eastern flank in the face of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In response to Europe's biggest security crisis in decades, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said, We are now deploying the NATO response force for the first time in a collective defense context. We speak about thousands of troops. We speak about air and maritime capabilities. The 40,000-troop-strong NATO response force is designed to be ready 365 days a year to respond within two or three days when a security crisis emerges. There must be no space for miscalculation or misunderstanding. 
We will do what it takes to protect and defend every ally, and every inch of NATO territory, Stoltenberg said. Parts of a spearhead unit known in NATO jargon as the Very High Readiness Joint Task Force, which is currently led by France, will also be sent. Its main brigade of about 5,000 troops now consists of a joint Franco-German unit based in Lille, France with contributions from Spain, Portugal, and Poland. The announcement came after NATO members, ranging from Russia's neighbor Estonia in the north down around the west of conflict hit Ukraine to Bulgaria on the Black Sea coast, triggered urgent consultations Thursday about their security amid concerns from the invasion. The Pentagon says thousands of U.S. troops are on standby to Europe. Biden told Americans not to worry about nuclear war amid Putin tensions. The North Atlantic Alliance Allied Power was mobilized to provide assistance to the North Atlantic Alliance allies in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The United States has already committed 12,000 state troops to be deployed in North Atlantic Alliance partner countries on Russia's western border. The department has made it ready to deploy a number of multitasking units in the United States and Europe increasing our readiness to deliver U.S. contributions to the NRF in less time than we were able to do before. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby said, If called upon by NATO to support the NRF in defense of the alliance, we are ready and will certainly do so. Troops with the 82nd Airborne Division were deployed to Poland on February 14, 2022, at Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, North Carolina. An estimated 3,000 troops will be deployed as tensions rise in Eastern Europe. While the number of U.S. troops that will be deployed for the NRF has not yet been announced, Europe already has thousands of troops deployed. NRF is enabled for the first time since its inception. There are approximately 80,000 permanently stationed forces in Europe, with troops deployed in 12,000 states, and 2,000 based in Germany, Italy, and Greece. In response to Russia's unwarranted and unjustified invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, NATO has for the first time mobilized NRF elements in a deterrent and defensive role, NATO said in a statement. The Allies have placed thousands of additional soldiers in high readiness reserved for the NRF, along with armored vehicles, artillery, ships and aircraft. Although President Joe Biden has said that U.S. troops will not enter Ukraine to directly participate in the fight against Russia, the U.S. Department said that eventually U.S. forces may be called upon to participate in NRF missions. We will do whatever it takes to defend our country, and as the president has said, we will do whatever it takes to defend every inch of NATO territory, and we take those obligations seriously, Kirby said. The U.S. is also looking for other ways to provide both lethal and non-lethal aid to Ukraine. On Friday, Biden authorized an additional $350 million in military aid from the Department of Defense. The inventory, which includes anti-armor, light weapons and various ammunition, body armor and related equipment, was authorized to support Ukraine's frontline troops. Kirby said Biden's additional support brought total security aid to Ukraine to $1 billion last year. Biden recently stepped up emergency security assistance for the third time using the Presidential Withdrawal Authority. The world's biggest security organization previously had around 5,000 troops stationed in the Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, and Poland but has significantly beefed up its defenses over the past three months. Significant support is also sent to the eastern flank of the alliance from other NATO allies. Germany said Friday that it plans to deploy troops and a Patriot anti-missile system to Slovakia, which is a member of NATO and one of the countries to have triggered the urgent consultations, as part of an enhanced vigilance activity battle group. NATO's supreme allied commander in Europe, U.S. General Todd D. Wolters, said the new contributions, represent a flexible, combat-credible force that can be employed in multiple ways and we are utilizing fully their inherent agility. NATO began beefing up its defenses in northeastern Europe after Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Recently, some members have also sent troops, aircraft, and warships to the Black Sea region, near allies Bulgaria, Romania and Turkey. Created in 2002 to accelerate NATO's response capability, the force consists of land, air, sea, and special operation forces and is intended to respond to a wide gamut of challenges, including disaster relief and evacuations. On the other hand, the more difficult progress of Russia's invasion of Ukraine than expected seems to have made stronger voices in Russia against Putin. 
Russian lawmakers of the Gagarinsky Municipal District in Moscow described the Russian invasion of Ukraine as catastrophic. This is a path to the deterioration and impoverishment of the country. No other action can do more harm to the Russian economy, he says. Putin may resort to new methods to accelerate the invasion. According to the announcement of the Ukrainian intelligence, Russia is preparing a deliberate provocation to justify the entry of Belarusian troops. According to available intelligence, there are currently about 300 Belarusian tanks near the Belarusian-Ukrainian border.